Former Iowa's nine area education agencies must make big changes to comply with new state mandates. Changes in special education funding got the most attention over the last few months, but won't be put into place until after this upcoming school year. But AEAs and school districts must prepare right now for changes to its general education funds, which offer curriculum, teacher, and administration support. And I talked with the head of one Eastern Iowa AEA about those changes. And then our general education, what's changed in terms of the general education funding mechanism is 40% of those funds that we have historically received come to us now and 60% of those funds now go directly to the school district. So you can imagine as we're scrambling the jets there on how do we ensure a continuation of the high quality services, knowing that we only receive 40% of the funds that we've historically received. So we've really had to pivot very quickly. Um, we've had to work with our staff, but most importantly, we've had to work with our external stakeholders. So our school superintendents, curriculum directors, and principals to find out what are their priorities in terms of 24, 25, and how can we match our services to their needs? That way we can recapture some of that 60% that goes to the school districts. Has there been an impact at the AEA as far as staffing is concerned? Because we had heard that there were a number of people who had left uh, the uh, area education agencies, mainly because they feared for the future. Yeah, we've seen a significant uh, exodus of staff and a large driving force when you sit down and you talk to those staff members is just the uncertainty about the future, particularly in those general education supports and services. They know we're receiving 40% for 24, 25, and we're going to build on that. However, for 25, 26, 100% of that funding goes to the school district. So you can kind of imagine that that creates a a level of fear and uncertainty in the minds of our staff members. And so many of them have pursued career opportunities outside the AEA system, and we've supported them. We completely understand and, and empathize with why they might be doing that. And that school districts and others have been eager to hire them because we have such high quality staff here. So they found no, no difficulty in, in finding gainful employment. But it must have some kind of an impact. Um, and, and I wonder if it has a greater impact on Iowa's rural school districts. Yeah, it, it definitely has. I would say that probably one of the biggest challenges that has surfaced uh, as a consequence of this is just several of our rural, rural schools um, are not going to be able to afford maybe the services that they have had in the past. So as we move into a, a fee-for-service model or a service-for-fee, so every service that we provide moving forward has to come with a fee. It's very different for us. It's a mindset shift. We're used to having principal or superintendent calls us up and says, hey, we need service X. We're boots on the ground the next day delivering that service. Now we have to step back and pause and say, okay, uh, this we we're happy to do this. However, it comes with a cost and moving into a monetizing type of environment is certainly a, a pretty pretty big change for us. And William says in the past, AEAs were able to save money by financially leveraging large numbers of school districts that it served. That economy of scale, he says, is lost due to these changes. We'll be right